Warren Buffett. And uh, Warren, Warren Buffett, you know, that famous investor, one of the richest men in the world, he said, the problem today is, is it's easy to go online and invest and then sell them, invest and sell. Some people get on there and they think they're going to beat the market, he said, and they're going to invest and they're going to sell quickly and they're going to turn money real fast, he says. But he said, I'll tell you in the long run, he said, they're going to lose. He says, too easy. He said, you don't do that if you want to get rich. He said, just make a few right investments. You'd agree with that, wouldn't you, Bob? Hallelujah. Make a few right investments. And he said, even 10, maybe two, he said, even two or three, and stick with it, and you'll become rich someday, he said, if you just do that. You'll have finances. And, uh, and uh, he said that you can't, he said, uh, you can't know everything, and you can't do everything. He said, he said, I didn't know about the Internet. I didn't even invest in Amazon, he said. And he said, I didn't even know about it. I didn't invest. I missed it. But it didn't matter, he said, because I'm not worried about it. He said, I, I stick with where I'm at, and he makes billions and billions of dollars. And, you know, it's the same with vision. It's the same with destiny. We don't do everything. You know, if we say, well, we're going to do it. We're going to feed the world. We're going to clothe the world. We're going to do everything. There's, there's lots of ministries targeted to different things that are the needs of the world. We do a humanitarian like we are in, in Ukraine right now. We have things going over for this very church. Had a lot of stuff we sent over there to Ukraine to help them. Our goal in doing that is, of course, to serve the churches, serve the people in their desperate need, but also out of that to build relationship and to build relationship that we can have ongoing time of working together, partnering together to do things for God together and help them. And that's what's happening over there in Ukraine right now. But you can't do everything. And it's like he said, you narrow it down, and we don't try. We have a simple little vision statement. It's win, build, send. Hallelujah. Evangelize, disciple people, and send people or release people into their destiny and in their ministry. So here we are at our 20th anniversary, and then we've grown into this thing for sure. And there's a story in the Bible. John the Baptist has just been put in prison. He's going to be beheaded before long. And Jesus then launched his ministry. He's just been baptized. Jesus has now started preaching. And on this particular day, a multitude of people are following him, but he's still all by himself. Jesus is doing it all alone as far as we know, maybe a few people, but we don't know. No disciples, nobody with him. He's just doing it alone. Jesus comes, the Bible says, by the Sea of Galilee or Gennesaret, and there Jesus uh, 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 gets in a boat, a specific boat. He knew what he was doing. He didn't do anything by accident. When you have vision, folks, you don't do things by accident. When you have vision, you don't just throw things out here. Well, we're going to throw it over here. No, you're, you're targeted in what you want to accomplish in a vision. And when you're that way, it's like Warren Buffett said, you'll reach your goal if you have that. So Jesus knew what he was doing, and, and he got into a boat who was, belonged to a guy named Simon Peter. And Jesus said, can you let me teach from your boat and push out? They were mending their nets after all night of fishing and working on their nets. And after Jesus taught for a while, it says in Luke chapter 5, verse 4, when he finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we've, we have toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. <laughs> and the story goes on that he called his friends and, and Peter, but they all saw the miracle, and other boats came, and they were all full of fish. It was a miracle. They knew it was a miracle because they were professional fishermen, and they knew that they had fished all night, and they just weren't biting that night. But something transpired. They recognized that, and they heard the teachings of Jesus. And so Simon fell on his knees and said, Lord, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. I'm a bad dude, Lord. You don't want, you don't want to come around me. But the Lord had chosen him. I, I, I spoke Friday night at the conference. that God uses imperfect people. He chooses imperfect people. He's not looking for perfection, folks. He's just looking for hearts, hallelujah, that will willingly follow him. And so then it says in the next verse down, I think 10, and Jesus said, Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you're going to be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. What a statement. Simon, to, to a fisherman, he deliberately went to fishermen. Did you know that? He didn't go to the bankers. He didn't go to the, these people. He didn't say, well, you're going to invest the rest of your life in men. No, he went to fishermen because there's something about fishing. 
There's something about you have to go out there and you have to kind of have a strategy. You have to plan when and where the fish are biting. Of course, today we have electronic GPSs and all kinds of things to find the fish. But they had to kind of strategize and, and all these kinds of things. And they had to work to fish. And they had to work a lot to fish. And then they had to clean the fish. And they had to do all kinds of things to sell the fish and put, take it to market. All these things. Jesus knew the kind of people he was getting to start the church. He wanted people, amen, that knew something. And he said, you're going to fish for men. He tied their career. He tied their knowledge. He tied their history and what they knew to what he was going to do in the kingdom. And that was going to go out and get people and fish for people. And we find, uh, and so I, you know, I was asking the Lord, what should I say to Living Hope? And I feel these words for Living Hope on this anniversary and for as we go move forward, launch out into the deep. Amen. Say it with me. Launch out into the deep. Hallelujah. Oh, some people are afraid of the deep water. Some people are afraid of launching out, right? My wife hates to get on a boat. I love boats, and she'd rather just sit on the seashore, not even the seashore, at the house. <laughs> but there's something about it. He said, you got to launch out. If you're going to really catch the fish, you got to be willing to launch out. you got to willing to be willing to be stretched. you got to be willing to take chances. Storms come, stuff like that. you got to have nets, and you got to mend those nets and make those. See, we, we believe that in church planting, that's the net. We make these nets. The church is a net that you build to catch fish. That's what it's for around the world for God. And uh, we build these nets and mend these nets, and, that, and then we connect these nets together. That's the idea of a fellowship. That's why we have a fellowship. We connect nets together, and together all of our nets around the world, as it continues to grow, we catch a lot of fish. A lot of fish. Sammy was there from the Philippines, and he, and he said, we were at the conference we were at, we didn't know how many churches were planted. He said 150 churches were planted at that conference uh, uh, when we were there a couple months ago. And then we did Mexico. I showed a lot of pictures of Mexico. We had about a dozen churches planted in Mexico. And then we had an, uh, one in Amarillo, Texas planted this week. And I could go on and on. And, uh, and there's something about uh, whenever you do, you're, you're building a, your, your net, putting your boat together. You, gotta, you need a boat if you're going to fish. And that's what the church is about. It's not about just our program. It's about we're a boat, and, we're gonna, and we have nets, and we throw those nets out in and, uh, and various ways within our neighborhoods, our outreaches, our ministries, uh, and we need more nets in this church. We want to we get more nets and more ways to reach people. You pull them in, uh, and there you disciple them, uh, such as that, work with them, and, and then you send them out to do that, repeat that process, with build another boat, and get more nets. Hallelujah. Peter called his friends, did you see that, to come and help. He needed more boats to take in what God was doing. We need a lot more boats. That's what we need, a lot more boats, a lot more workers, a lot more fishermen. Amen. So the th word that I feel from the Lord is launch out into the deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God was teaching them a lesson here. See, Jesus not only held back the fish, and he, but he gave the fish because he wanted to teach them something about who's in charge and who's the Lord of the harvest. You know, three and a half years later after Jesus died and rose again, and he's on the, there again back to fishing. Because they thought that everything was done, Jesus was over, we're going to go back to our career. That was a nice three and a half years, yada, yada, good time, hallelujah, well, and now it's done. You know, Jesus died. And so here they are, back fishing again, Peter's on the boat, they're out there, and they didn't catch nothing again. Hallelujah. You've got to be in the will of God to catch stuff, folks. You don't just, you don't just uh, catch it on your own, right? If you're really going to catch what God's got, you've got to be in where God's at. We always say God's person in God's place at God's time if you're really going to catch the fish. And so Jesus, it turns out, they've fished all night. They're coming in. They've caught nothing. And Jesus is standing on the seashore, the resurrected Jesus with the nail scars in his hands. He's standing on the seashore, but they didn't recognize him. And he said, brothers or children, have you caught any fish? He asked John chapter 21. And they said, no, there's no fish out here today. We've fished all night. That's how it is when I fish, you know. I don't catch nothing. You Filipinos are good fishermen, but not me. Hallelujah. And when I go fishing, I always stop by the store on the way home and buy a fish. Hallelujah. <laughs> so Janet can cook fish. I almost always do that. That's our big joke. Well, stop by the store on your way back, she'll say, because you ain't going to catch nothing. And she prophesies that over me. That's why I don't catch nothing. You're speaking it over my life. Now I know. Hallelujah. <laughs> we camped at a place a whole week. The guy by me was catching fish like crazy up in Shasta. And I, I'd come home every day stopping by the store to bring a fish. Uh, and he wouldn't even give me one. Amen. <laughs> Anyways, uh, neither here nor there. 
John chapter 21, verse 5, and he called out, friends, have you caught any fish? That's what he would say to me, Larry, you catch anything? And they replied, uh, no, we didn't catch nothing. Then he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll get plenty of fish. Wow. So they did. And they couldn't draw in the net because there were so many fish. Now, folks, these guys are fishermen. They know that 10 feet's not going to make that much difference on the other side of the boat. It's not a big boat. It's not, it's like, it's not like that's going to make they, they know that's not. So they know that there's a miracle that just happened uh, because when 10, when, you know, it may not make a difference on a boat 10 feet, but 10 feet makes a lot of difference when you're tied to Jesus. When you're tied to Jesus, uh, one little incident can make a difference. One soul can change the world. One event can change people. Hallelujah. You know, I was reading about Nelson Mandela. Just, uh, I love to read about him, and I've read his book a couple times and watched the movie and stuff like that. Here's one man, and there's been many like that, but he changed the whole country. We're going to be in South Africa in September doing a Bible conference down there for our churches in South Africa. And uh, 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 I've been a number of times to the prison cell. That man was in all those years, breaking rocks for 15 years. 15 years. They just let him, uh, made him break rocks and nothing else. He wrote a book, but he had to dig it in the dirt and hide it down by the rocks, amen, so nobody would find it and slip it out in little tiny pieces of paper that became the story, his story that, that shook everything up in that country, and of course, he came out and became the president of the country and changed that country completely, got rid of that stinking apartheid and moved that country forward. One man, one person, one decision, one decision, one net, one church can change the world. If we think all we can do is sit here and do nothing, we'll do nothing. If we think all we can do is just have, you know, this, we can touch the world no matter how many of us are here, especially in this day and time. And so uh, that's what Jesus, Jesus asked him. And 10 feet wasn't that much, but with God, 10 feet was a lot. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're called to launch out in the deep, and what are we called to do? Fish fish. That's the call of the church. Bottom line, fish. Maybe we ought to use our symbol for the church. But yeah, that's what we're called. Right there, look at that. That's what we're called to do. You know, that's, that's the call of the church. Amen. If the church stops fishing, then, then the country goes pot to pot. We got to fish for young people. We got to fish for old people. We got to fish for drug addicts. We got to fish for prostitutes. We got to fish for Afghan refugees. We got to fish uh, for Spanish speaking. We got to fish for everybody, folks. And, and, uh, and whatever situation they're in, we got to fish for them. Amen. And how we fish for them is we launch out. We launch out. So, a prophetic word for our church. Let's launch out in this year like we never have. We come out of COVID. We made it out of COVID, thank God. And we came through with victory. And, and because of that, we know that now it's, it, the, 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 the ocean's right. There's a lot of fish out there, right? There's a lot of fish out there. There's fish across the street. We go fishing over there. There's fish, and we have the movies in here for them. There's fish, uh, that, and we do these fishing, and we figure out more ways that we can fish. Amen. That's the call that Jesus made. The very first call that Jesus made was to go fishing. Listen to this. And Mark 1, 17, Jesus said to them, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. That's what I'm going to make you to do. He's prophesying not only about these men, but the church. His church is going to be fishers of men and women, people. Matthew 4, 19, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. This is just different uh, parallels of the story that we, that we read, how Jesus did that. Amen. And he chose fishermen because they had this, uh, at least in the back of their minds, they could put two and two together and understand what it was about. This kingdom is about fishing. That's what the kingdom of God's about is fishing. Hallelujah. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus is, is in the home of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. The Bible says he was a tax collector and he was very rich. And uh, the Bible says that uh, the tax, well, the Bible doesn't say, but tax collectors in that time were really crooked people. I don't know if they are today, but they, <laughs> but they were crooked people then. And, uh, and they, they, that's the part of the deal. Jews would cross over and they would collect taxes and rip people off and they'd take a percentage for themselves and they became very rich. That's how it worked. And the bribes for themselves. And Jesus is in his house eating with him. And all the religious people say, what in the world is Jesus doing in Zacchaeus' house? That's no place for a rabbi. That's no place for a person of God hanging out with those kind of people. And the Bible tells us, uh, well, you know, it says, uh, let's see if I've got it here. I think I have it here. Let me see what he said. Maybe I don't. 
Did I put it up there, guys? Hallelujah. Let me see. <laughs> I'm jumping around on them anyways. They don't know what I'm doing back there half the time. Amen. <laughs> the older you get, the more scattered brains you get. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> anyways, Jesus, what did he say? You, know, you all know anyways, right? He said, those that are well don't need a doctor. I came to the sick. What's he saying? I'm in this house fishing. I'm fishing at this lunch. Hallelujah. I'm having lunch, but I'm fishing. And Zacchaeus, what did he do? He got his heart right, right? Not only that, he gave half of his wealth away to the back to people that he stole it from. That's pretty good, right? Hallelujah. And, and he told him, and then the very last thing, well, he said, there it is, Luke 19, 10. The Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. That's, that's it, folks. That is it. That's our future. That's who we are. That's what God's called. We, we're a net. We're a beautiful net here. Hallelujah. Got a beautiful church uh, and workers, laborers, and we are a beautiful net here that with many other nets that work together. The last command. Let's go from the first command. Follow me. Be faithful to the very last command. What does he say? In Mark chapter 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. In other words, go into all the world and fish. I didn't call you just to fish in Jerusalem. I didn't call you just to fish in Galilee. That's where you're comfortable. That's your home. I understand that. But I called you to fish all over the world. Go to, go to Samaria. They didn't like Samaritans, but they had to go anyway. They didn't like Samaritan food. They didn't like none of that stuff, but they had to go anyways. Go to Judea. Go out on the past. Then go into all the world. And Jesus is saying that to 11 guys. Or maybe 120 at the most in the upper room. That's who he's saying that to. I Man, how dying, how how fat, how crazy you might say is that going to all the world, you guys, and preach the gospel to every person, everyone, everywhere. Acts chapter one, just before he went up into heaven, just before he goes into heaven. Uh, the, and as soon as he says this, he's, they, they watch him go into heaven. Amazing. Acts chapter 1, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. You know what you are? You're a witness. You're a witness. That's what you are. Your life is a witness. Your testimony is a witness. How you live is a witness. People watch you and look at you, follow you, right? You're a witness. Your life is. And your voice when you speak is a witness. We are Christians, but, but he didn't call us Christians. He didn't say you will be Christians all over the world. Christian didn't come until Antioch. Or on down there, they started calling them Christians and, uh, back then, uh, but they didn't call them. Before that, it was the way. They were the people of the way, are the followers of Jesus, but the way before. And Jesus said, you're going to be witnesses. I'd rather be called a witness than a Christian. But I'm not a Jehovah's witness, but I'm a Jesus witness. <laughs> A witness. That's what we are, folks. And we understand that is the core of what a Christian is. A Christian is a witness. Our dear brother over here goes out on, is it Friday nights, and takes that pickup of his and, and puts a TV on there and whatever he does and witnesses to the kids down at the university at once a week all the time. Witnessing. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. Throws his own net out, out there all the time, talking to people, giving them tracks and stuff like that, out right, right downtown where the kids hang out from the university. Oh, Lord, give us more nets like that. Give us more nets. Hallelujah. And, and he said, you're going to be witnesses in Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the world. When Jesus told stories, especially as he got towards the end of his life, what did he say? He talked about a lost lamb. He said, I'll leave 90 and 9. I'll leave the whole, the whole congregation, he said. The 100, 100 sheep I have to go find that one that's lost. Oh, Lord, he was a fisherman, folks. He knew what it was to launch out. I'll launch out in the deep, and I'll search, and I'll look until I... Then he told the story of the lost coin. The woman uh, that lost her coin, and she looked all over the house, and she swept the house, and she did everything to find that coin that she lost. Because uh, he said, it's valuable. Every soul is valuable. That's why, folks, uh, we, believe, we, we believe in pro-life. We believe in pro-life as people of God. Every soul is valuable to God from the day of the second they're, they're conceived. Hallelujah. They're valuable to God. And who knows what they're going to grow and become, amen, and accomplish for the kingdom of God and for their life. Uh, and Jesus tells us, he, he says, I'll, give, I'll leave all for one. And then he talked about the lost pearl of great price. 
the pearl, amen. So then he talked about the lost son and the father just waiting for the son and looking for the son and waiting and uh, for the son to come back. That's God, folks. He's pleading. He's wanting. He's hungry for people to come back to him. Hallelujah. God is at work in the earth. You know, you don't have to be afraid, folks. You don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid of what's happening in inflation, gas, stuff like that. You know, it's, it's going to go up. Just believe God that he can provide you more money if you need it. Hallelujah. Get a smaller car, whatever you need to do. To go on a diet. Amen. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, whatever. We can, we're going to be okay. Everybody's going to be okay, folks. Uh, and there's no problem in, in those kind of things for sure. I mean, God gave you this home yeah, for a miracle. He testified about two Sundays ago, right in the middle of all this mess, right? He gave you a home and blessed you. God will bless you if you believe that God will bless you. Don't cry about the price of gas, and the price of this and that. Just thank God you have the money to put gas and you have a car to put it in. Hallelujah. And you have a home to live in, food to eat, uh, and God will give you all that you need if you seek God first. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, God is at work in the earth. We believe that. That's why we respond from our fellowship. We, we cho chose years ago, I chose that our fellowship would respond as much as we can in crisis areas of the world. Now, we, now we can't go everywhere. We know that. But wherever we can, uh, we, we're going to respond in whatever little bit we can. We went into uh, Ukraine with really nothing. John went in there with nothing, amen, barely, uh, just enough that we said we're going to help. He thought he was going to minister to the churches. Then he saw they had needs. He saw they needed medical stuff. Elizabeth went to the hospital here. They donated all that medical stuff. We sent it in. Hallelujah. And then uh, they, uh, uh, they began to find out they needed other things. Uh, you know, they called us for those body bags. How many body bags? 500 body bags. Yeah, well, what's a church? Where are we going to find body bags? And th that was not the army. That was the Christians that wanted to bury their own dead from their churches. They couldn't have no, nothing to bury them in. And, and Janet called one of the young men in our fellowship that works at the mortuary, uh, a large one there, and, and he said, oh, I'll find what I can do. They gave all these body bags and all this stuff uh, for the, over there and, and tourniquets and stuff like that and, and go on and on and on. It's just because we responded, but in the midst of that, we believe God is at work in the earth. We know that the enemy's at work. We know that this war's not of God and no wars of God. Starvation's not of God. None of that is. It's because we, li we all live in a fallen world, and we can't escape the influence of the fallen world around us. We're not living in a bubble, right? Uh, sometimes America's like a bubble, but we're not totally in a bubble. But nevertheless, folks, uh, we, we know that God is working through the, the decisions of human beings, even if it is war and such as that, to bring about um, his good purpose. And his purpose is always, always has been, always will be a harvest of souls. Hallelujah. This flesh is going to die. One day we're going to put this old body off. Hallelujah. And this, uh, Paul called it this tent that I'm living in is going to be put off one of these days. But this spirit's going to live forever. Hallelujah. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about this spirit here, that it's right with God. My heart's right with God. And, and, uh, and that I'm doing what God wants while I'm in this old body. Hallelujah. To accomplish his will. Because that's what's going to go with me. Right? That's what's going to go with us. Not this building. Not all the other stuff. Although wonderful to have it. And we thank God for it. And we need to do all these things, but what's going with us is what comes out of it. Amen. Hallelujah. And, uh, and it's hard. Second Peter 3, 9 says, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you. Patient towards you. Not wishing that any, say any, any, any look at this whole seven, eight billion people, not one of them. They're all his kids. God knew every one of them before they were born. God knew everyone. He knows you. He doesn't want any of his children to perish. We had Eric Dooley, Dr. Eric Dooley. He's a clinical psychologist at our conference ministering. And he said when they lived in Malaysia, I met, or, or in Indonesia, I met him back over there years ago. And uh, he said that uh, they were have they were, wife's having a baby, but she looked like she was going to have another miscarriage. She already had a miscarriage. And he prayed to God. He said, well, God, I don't care if this baby's sick. Because he said, people had told him, well, you know, sometimes miscarriages are because God's helping you because that baby may have problems. He said, I don't care if the baby has problems. I don't care if the baby, he says, has Down syndrome. I don't care what. I want my baby. He said, I want my baby. He said, I'll take care of that baby and I'll love that baby. If there's something wrong with it, give, him, give me the baby anyway. I want that baby. 
Well, that baby didn't survive, he said, already in heaven. Uh, she had a miscarriage. They had five, five other kids. But, uh, but that's how God is. He has babies that are sick, babies that are broken, babies that are hurt, babies that are you know, turning their back on him. But God says, I want my babies. And I don't want any to perish. I want everyone to come to repentance. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. John 3, 16. That's what it's about. That's what launching out in the deep is. God launched out into the deep. He launched into this dirty world and sent his own son, the begotten son of God, hallelujah, to live among the dirt, because we're all made of dirt anyways. Live among the dirt, walk among them, be abused by them, be killed by them, and all that. He launched down the deep because God's the greatest fisherman there is. God is the one who sends, not us. He sends. He sends, him, he sends prophets, he sends preachers, and he sent himself. And God sends, he said, who, who gave his only son, that whomsoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, God, we pray today, God, on this 10th anniversary, 20th anniversary of Living Hope, that, God, this will not just be a millstone, milestone, rather, God, but this won't just be a month we pass, but, God, we will determine in our hearts we're going to launch out deeper, 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 deeper. Hallelujah. We'll launch, God, wherever we need to launch, in our community first, Jerusalem, in our neighborhoods across the streets and around the community, God. We're going to launch out. Help us, Lord, to fix our nets that are broken, to fix our, our, our witnesses, Lord, where we're not witnessing, and to be able to throw nets all over Tucson. Help us to plant campuses and churches all over the outlying towns, God, of Tucson. Lord, to put, a net, uh, put one out there in each of these areas that's growing rapidly, dear God. They don't want to drive into this part of town, God. We pray that we'll put nets out there. Plant more nets, God, out there and reach all this area for you. In the next 20 years, God, may we see that this church, and even less than that, has put nets all over this city, God, no matter how big it grows. There's not one nook and corner, not one place that doesn't know about Jesus Christ because we've thrown our net out and every other church thrown their net out. And we're going to touch this city in Jesus' name. While your heads are bowed for just a moment, you might have come into this service and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. As your personal Savior. As your Savior. That's what He wants to be. He doesn't want, it's not about doing something or being religious. It's about knowing Jesus Christ as the Son of God who died on the cross, rose on the third day, and is sitting now by the, by the throne of God, hallelujah, as the Savior. And it's His blood. He was the sacrificial lamb that sacrificed for us on the cross of Calvary because we can't do it ourselves. Religion is us working our way to God, trying to, trying to figure out how to get to God, and God's way is Jesus coming to us. God came to us. We didn't go to Him. He sought us out. We didn't seek Him out. And today, if you don't know the Lord or if you're not serving God today, you can receive Him. And all you, it's not that you have to join this church. No, you just need to open your heart. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Jesus, if you're real, come into my heart. Forgive my sins. And I want to make you the Lord, the Savior of my life. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved. Anyone in here today said, Pastor, I'm not saved. Or I'm a backslider. I'm not serving God. I want to give my life to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's stand together, can we? Oh, glorious one, glorious one, glorious one. I'm going to put it on our banner. Launch out into the deep. Hallelujah. We're going to find some deep holes in Tucson. We're going to dig for them. We're going to look for them. We're going to find where the pockets of fish are. Hallelujah. They're here. How many know that? They're all over the place. Pockets of fish that need the love of God. We're going to do what we can to serve them, to feed them. You know, uh, someone told, mentioned the other night at our conference that his dad was the guy from Africa, right? His dad was a fisherman. I think he was. Or, uh, and his dad would go out at night and throw bread on the, on the place they fished. And then the next day, he'd go back and fish there where he threw the bread because the fish were drawn to the bread. There was fish there. 
So we're going to get a bunch of bread, spiritual bread, and throw it out over to find places to throw it in Tucson so we can go fishing there. Hallelujah. It might be helping people. It might be serving people. It might be working with refugees that we're, we've been working on here. It might be what other things, whatever it is. Amen. We'll do it. We'll throw some bread out. We'll help out that's, and, and, and do that. And, and, and the effort, one goal is just to let them know the love of God and let them know that God cares about them and God's there for them. Lord, help us to do that. Can you pray that with us? Help us to do that. Help us to launch out in the deep. Help us, God, to find the pockets of fish in Tucson. First, all over this city, God, the hurting, the lost, the desperate, the broken. Give us the ones nobody else wants. We're happy with that. If no other church wants them, just give them to us, God. We'll take them. We don't mind taking the, the outcast. We don't mind taking the drug addict. We don't mind taking the prostitute. We don't mind taking, dear God, the broken one. We're glad to. We're glad to. Thank you, Lord. Give us, give us the broken ones. Hallelujah. By your grace, we pray. And we commit it to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I want you to sing a song in closing today. If you want prayer for anything, personal prayer needs you have. Hallelujah. We'll pray with you.